Let's look at how to take a displacement time graph and draw the corresponding velocity time graph. And in this video, we'll only look at cases involving straight lines, that is displacement time graphs where there's constant rates of change. Starting with this one here, notice that we do have a straight line in our displacement time graph, which means we have a constant rate of change. The displacement is always changing at the same rate. And that's the rate that we want to graph on our velocity time graph. Now notice that velocity is measured in kilometers per hour. So we need to figure out how many kilometers per hour the displacement is changing by over here. And to do that, we can just use any two points on the graph and find the slope. That'll tell us the number of kilometers per hour that the displacement is changing. So I'll just maybe use this point here and another point that I can read easily, perhaps this one right here. And I'll draw that slope triangle that we often draw when calculating slope. And let's take a look at our rise and our run. Now from this point to this point, notice that our Y value or our displacement went from 10 up to 70. So that changed by 60 kilometers. So I'll write in 60 and I'm gonna add in kilometers here just for now. Now what about the run? Well, from this point to this point, we went from zero hours all the way up to 20 hours. So that's our run. So I'll just write 20 hours. So if we want to find the number of kilometers per hour, we can just divide. We know that uh, we, we traveled 60 kilometers in 20 hours. And if we divide 60 by 20, we get three, which represents three kilometers every hour. So three kilometers per hour. And that's what we're going to graph on our velocity time graph. So I will just maybe label up the axes here. Uh, maybe we'll go one, two, three, and negative one, negative two, negative three. Of course, this is zero here. And we need to show a constant velocity of three kilometers per hour. And we can do that just using a horizontal line at three. And we'll make that go all the way up to uh, 30 for the hours, because that's what the original graph did. So something like, where are we here? That, oops, okay, should go all the way to 30, but hopefully you get the idea. Now let's take a look at one where we have a changing velocity. Now notice in this graph, we have straight lines still, but we have some different slopes happening. We kind of have three sections, which means our velocity graph is also going to have three sections to represent the three different rates of change in our displacement time graph. And we can calculate those rates of change just like we did in the previous question. We'll just find the slope of each segment. So maybe for the first one here, we'll take a couple points, that one and that one. We can draw our little triangle. And in this case, notice we have a run of four. I'm not gonna write the units this time here. And we have a rise of negative seven because it dropped by, uh, by seven meters in this case. So our slope M is our rise over run. So negative seven divided by four, which equals negative 1.75. And we can write meters per second if you're looking for some units on that. Now this part here is a horizontal line, it has a slope of zero. Of course, it has no rise, it has only run. So if you did rise divided by run for that segment there, you would get zero divided by your run, which is going to give us zero. All right, and again, we can write meters per second if we would like to write some units. And for the last piece here, why don't we use maybe this point here and this point here. We'll draw that little triangle just like that. And we have a rise of eight and a run of three. So for this part here, we have a slope of eight divided by three, which is approximately 2.7 meters per second. So these are the values that we want to put on our velocity time graph. All right, so let's label up our axes again. Just switch colors here. And again, we can go one, two, three. We, we need to get up to a velocity of 2.7 meters per second. So this scale will allow for that. Negative one and negative two, negative three. Now let's take each piece and then we'll talk about whether or not we actually have a realistic situation here when it comes to motion. So our first part uh, of our displacement time graph uh, represents a velocity of negative 1.75 meters per second. So we're going to go to negative 1.75 on our velocity graph and we're going to draw that horizontal line. It looks like right up until about eight and a half seconds. So negative 1.75, and we'll just go right over to eight seconds. It's about oh, eight and a half, I think it was. Yeah, there we go. Like something like that. 
Okay, now our next part, uh, this horizontal part down here, uh, has a corresponding velocity of zero meters per second. So we're going to draw a horizontal line at zero uh, for the velocity. And that's gonna go from about eight and a half seconds right there until 13 seconds right there. Okay, so let's do that. So eight and a half until about 13, that's gonna be zero meters per second. All right, and last but not least, we have our 2.7 meters per second for the rest of the graph. So that starts at, th at uh, 13 seconds and goes right to the end of the graph. And that's 2.7, so that's around, somewhere around here. And there we go. Okay, so that is, you know, based on the graph we were given, quite an acceptable velocity time graph, but we should talk about whether or not this is actually realistic. So if we look at our velocity time graph, notice that we have some sharp corners here, which implies that we went from one velocity, in particular negative 1.75, to another velocity, zero meters per second, in an instant. Now think about that. Is it possible to go from one velocity or one speed to another instantaneously? And the answer is, well, no, not really. We'd actually have to slow down. And the same thing happens right here, right? Going from zero meters per second to 2.7 meters per second in an instant is actually not really possible. So what normally we would see if this was a more realistic displacement graph, instead of seeing sharp corners here, we'd see kind of a smoother curve to represent slowing down and speeding up again. And that's it. So now if that was the case, when we go to our velocity graph, what we would see is you know, when we go from our negative 1.75 meters per second to our zero meters per second, we would see a slightly, just a slightly slanted kind of line like this to represent slowing down. And of course, this should all be uh, kind of more smoothly curved. And the same thing here, you would see this kind of speeding up, going from one speed to the other. All right, so that's also kind of acceptable for the, for the purposes of our course here, but just keep in mind that the displacement time graph that we were given to begin with isn't very realistic. There you go.